after the Denver Broncos released running back Melvin Gordon on Monday after his costly fumble against the Las Vegas Raiders in Sunday's loss. What does the running back room look like as it currently stands? Plus, one running back that the Broncos just had suffered an injury in Sunday's game as well is expected to miss time. How does Denver move forward at running back? You get that and much more in today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Broncos country? Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day with your morning cup of coffee. Free and available everywhere you get your audio podcast or whether you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe or that follow button down below so you never miss out on a day's worth of Denver Broncos news, content coverage every single day, all year long from the South Stands to the end zone. I'm your host as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter for Mile High Sports, joined alongside as always by my co-host, Sarah Bettinger, site expert, predominantlyorange.com. Sarah, my friend, obviously Monday morning was an interesting day in the Valley. Prior to recording the episode, we already got an episode done, talked about how they should evaluate the rest of the season. We even brought up that the running back room would look different for this Denver team. And shortly after we published that podcast, the news came. The Broncos on Monday morning waved running back Melvin Gordon. And so now that running back room looks entirely different. We'll obviously talk about what the running back room looks like. But let's take a little bit of a look back as to why this happened here, why the Broncos decided to move on from Melvin Gordon. And Sarah, I think it's simple and easy enough to say. The fumbles. The fumbles were the biggest thing that really impacted Melvin Gordon and the perception of him in his time here as a member of the Denver Broncos, despite how efficient he has been for them in the red zone. The fumbles were simply too much, and Broncos general manager George Payton said, hey, it's time to move on. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Cody, he's been one of the most consistent sources of offense for this team over the last three years. Unfortunately, that has come as like a double-edged sword, right? It's come along with really uh, not that there's a good time for fumbles, but certainly if you're winning by like 20 points and you fumble, it's a lot better than, you know, if you're trying to scrape and claw back into a game or if you're trying to capture momentum. Unfortunately, I think there are a number of games that, uh, you know, Tony Dungy says that any game win or lose, you can kind of pinpoint it down to like five key plays throughout the course of a game. And unfortunately, I think over the course of Melvin Gordon's time with the Denver Broncos, especially the last two years, Way too much of his career with this team is going to be defined by just complete game changing fumbles. Unfortunately, you know, you could look at a number of different games, just even like off the top of my head, Cody, I think back to last year's Bengals game where the Broncos could have very not easily won that game, but they very well could have won that game. They definitely could have, you know, Things could have been different against the Kansas City Chiefs last season, you know, in Kansas City, if not for Melvin Gordon's fumble. There's a number of games this season, Seattle, the Raiders, obviously, you know, you have fumbles in a, in a number of situations early on in the season, four in the first four games. It's, it's just it's one of those things, man, where you can kind of look back and say, OK, we could have won this game if not for this particular play. And too much of that goes on Melvin Gordon's shoulders. I think a lot of it, too, at this point, you see him fumble this many times in one season, Cody. You can't help but think that it's it's at least partly a mental thing. Like, he's got a mental hurdle to get over. So a fresh start should be good for all, you know, both parties involved here. Yeah, and I want to wish Melvin Gordon the best in his career. Like I said, just being in the locker room, he's always been good to me. He's always been professional. He's always been willing to answer questions. And I would say that there were even moments, too, like especially after that Raiders game when he fumbled and it was returned for a touchdown. While, you know, he walked away from the podium, the fact that he was able to stand up there and talk about it, like I could tell you this with 110% certainty, Sarah, there is nobody that's harder on Melvin Gordon than himself. And I think we saw that on Sunday as well. When he fumbled, he literally took his helmet off slammed it on the ground and you know his teammates on the side were like hey it's all right it's all good like his teammates have been very supportive of him and i would even say too like there's some people that are making you know headlines about how you know he was tone deaf in his post game report i didn't see that at all with melvin being there in person one of the things that melvin did say he said that he was sick 
and that he knew that he shot himself in the foot on that one, and that's on him. Like, he was accountable for his fumble against the Raiders. Uh, but unfortunately, like the Broncos, this has just been a trend that's been happening far too often, as you mentioned, his tenure in the last three years as a member of the team. And now we, we've also heard the realm in the last couple of weeks, especially from Nathaniel Hackett in press conferences, we've heard the term accountability, right? And so I, I think this is one of those steps now – you know, a guy like Nathaniel Hackett removed from play calling responsibilities, now sitting in the seat of the head coaching position. This is where I think he made a statement as well, right? He handed over play calling, and now Melvin Gordon is no longer on the team due to a fumble that he had. So is this also something that's trying to, you know, for Nathaniel Hackett to potentially save his job in a sense? I'm not entirely sure, but this is what the Broncos would deem as a move for accountability. I just think that, you know, it, it was it was time to move on. He did decide to come back to Denver in the offseason, but he wanted to compete for that starting job with Javante Williams, and it simply wasn't his job. It was Javante's job the entire way, and you could definitely tell that he wanted to start. So now he'll go through the waiver process. We'll see if there's a team that picks him up. But as we mentioned, we want to wish Melvin Gordon the best in his future endeavors. Thank you for his time as a Denver Bronco. Sorry it didn't work out. That's all we have to leave it as. And I hope fans are also respectful as well. I know that the last couple of days we've had comments and there's been a lot of very like personal, you know, rude comments about Mem Gordon. He didn't get the job done in Denver. All right. Now we can move on from that. It's said it's done. But leave it alone. No need to attack Melvin Gordon. No need to say things verbally abusive towards him or people that he's associated with, as we've seen on social media. People got to be better than that. Fans have to be better than that. So, Melvin Gordon, best of luck to you going forward in your career. Appreciate the times that you've had in Denver. Sorry it didn't work out. That's all we have to leave it at that. And another thing we also have to talk about, with the waving of Melvin Gordon, Sarah, impacts the Broncos running back room in a different way. How does the running back room pose to look for the remainder of the season that's something that we're going to talk about on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of this complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. I've utilized BetterHelp and it's been game changing in my day to day. Every single week I schedule an appointment with my therapist that was matched to me. And what you do when you sign up, you fill out a form. It matches you to a therapist. And if you feel like you and your therapist have a good vibe, there you go. You get into it. If you feel like you need a new therapist, the one that you're matched with doesn't work for you. They will match you with another one and it doesn't cost you a single thing. They'll make that change for you as necessary because you deserve the best when it comes to your day-to-day -day life. Everyone deserves to feel their best and better help makes it easier to get started as the world's largest therapy service they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100 percent online all the benefits of in-person therapy plus it's more convenient more accessible and more affordable just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist and if things aren't clicking you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime it couldn't be simpler no waiting rooms no traffic no endless search for the right therapist get unstuck with better help learn more and save 10 percent off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on that's better help better h-e-l-p dot com slash locked on what does the Denver Broncos running back room look like after the Broncos waived Melvin Gordon on Monday? Plus, on the other side of things, they suffered an injury at the position as well that will force a player to miss several weeks. Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day and your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you engage in the comment section, share your thoughts, share your analysis. It allows you to get involved in the show. If you're on Twitter, you can tweet us at Cody Work NFL, at Sarah Bettinger, at Lockdown Broncos. This is a very, very different vibe. We talk about evaluation season here going forward. I mean, Sarah, Coming into it, the Broncos' top two running backs projected for the season, Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, number three being Mike Boone. Those three guys currently are not playing right now for this Broncos team. It is a very, very odd turn of events despite you know the struggles this offense has faced all throughout the year. So the question is, what does the running back room look like right now? Let's go over who's in the room and let's talk about some of their roles. 
All right. So we start off obviously with Latavius Murray, who's, you know, been a really nice addition for the Denver Broncos. I wouldn't say, you know, going out there, he's looking like vintage Adrian Peterson or anything, but man, Latavius Murray has been effective. He's been exactly what the Broncos needed in terms of a sure handed running back. He's not going to fumble. He's going to fall forward for extra yards. He's going to help your red zone offense. Unfortunately, Cody, we didn't see him out there on the field when the Broncos could have gone up 17 to 10 or 17 to seven or whatever it was was before halftime against the Raiders. So, I, I, I mean, that's a, another, you know, notch on the belt for Nathaniel Hackett, I guess. But Latavius Murray is currently the running back one in Denver, which is kind of wild to think about, isn't it? I mean, when you look at just this whole, the, the whole craziest season that it has been this year in terms of now you've got the running back room down in their top three guys. Your wide receiver room is down, down three of your top four guys. You lost or traded away your number one receiver in terms of receptions last year to the Seahawks, Noah Fant. Your offensive line is down umpteen guys at this point. So, I mean, it's no wonder the offense is in a shambles, I guess, when you think about all the injuries and changes that have gone on. But Latavius Murray, for the final seven games of the season, at least at what it looks like right now, he'll be the number one running back behind him. We haven't got to see him play yet, but Marlon Mack, uh, a running back the Broncos picked up off the San Francisco 49ers practice squad. He's got a history of being really productive in the NFL. Unfortunately, injuries derailed his career with the Indianapolis Colts. He's had a tough time catching on th this season with a couple of different teams. So will he be able to be effective for the Denver Broncos? That's That remains to be seen, but I'm at least intrigued at this point, right? I mean, like you said, you lost your top three guys at the position. You might as well give him a shot. And then on the practice squad, you've got Divino Zigbo. So Will the Broncos bring in somebody else? That's that's another big question here. Mike Boone, could he come back soon? The other the other wrinkle to this whole thing is Cody and I didn't mention him because Chase Edmonds, the guy the Broncos just traded for from the Dolphins, well, he just suffered a high ankle sprain against the Las Vegas Raiders on Sunday, so he's going to be out several weeks. So he doesn't factor in right now. I mean, the running back position, it couldn't be going. It, it's kind of like, uh, what was that, 2008 with the Peyton Hillis year where you finally went to your fullback as the full-time running back? Mike Shanahan was just like, screw it. We're was that the Corral Buckhalter year? I think Corral yeah, Buckhalter probably. was <laughs> Man, one of those one of those years we got a it's kind of like Groundhog Day here in 2022, man, everything's coming full circle. But yeah, I mean, it's like this is uh, this is the running back room for the remainder of the season. Seven games remaining. And right. We talk about we're looking at everything as evaluation season going forward. I, I know you and I are on the boat of saying, hey, you know, Latavius Murray, I think, has, has shown enough to at least be back for another year in Denver next year. Not as the primary guy but in a role that he has, right, because he can hold on to the football. He's a big body. He can fall forward. Obviously, he scored a touchdown against the Raiders. He's reliable when you get into the red zone. Not sure, you know, and I understand Nathaniel Hackett said after the game on Sunday that Melvin has scored a lot of touchdowns in the red zone, which is true. He's one of the top running backs in the NFL when it comes to red zone touchdowns in the last five years. Unfortunately, when you can't rely on a guy to hold on to the football, that's an issue. That's where Latavius Murray maybe go forward. You're like, hey, all right, Latavius should be the guy. And he got a, a bulk of the carries in the second half for the Broncos in their game against the Raiders on Sunday. So that was kind of the move saying, hey, you know what? The thing with Melvin Gordon, it's a little too much. They decided to move on. But, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see if Divina Zigbo gets called up, right? Marlon Mack, how, how do these guys maybe factor into it? Marlon Mack's a guy that, you know, he, he puts his head down every day. He's grinding at practice. Chase Edmonds more of the guy, you know, that, that had speed to him, that could get to the outside, using the passing game. We haven't seen Marlon Mack play much football in the last couple of years, right? Because he's been overcoming a lot of different injuries that have impacted him. I also wonder with Mike Boone potentially coming back off of IR, how does this factor into maybe how they want to use him? Because before he got hurt, I mean, he was actually getting some carries. He's also a key special teams guy for them. I think now more than ever with the, the, the waving of Melvin Gordon and with Latavius really kind of being the only solidified guy, I think this is where Mike Boone's value, in my opinion, the chance for him to be evaluated, especially on the last year of his deal to come back next year. This is where evaluation season firmly kicks in, in my opinion, about Mike Boone. I'm a big Mike Boone guy. Yeah, I like Mike Boone, too. He's got some explosiveness to him. Unfortunately, we just haven't got to see much of him due to injuries. And that's been the case for way too many guys. And as we talk about getting into evaluation season, that's the really tough part, isn't it? Is 
we want to be able to evaluate these guys. But as of right now, we just we can't we can't evaluate KJ Hamler. We can't evaluate Mike Boone. We can't evaluate these, you know, these players that we want to see out there playing because they're getting injured and they're having to go to the I mean, I wanted I was looking really forward, Cody to evaluating Chase Edmonds. I was thinking, man, this is a very interesting dart throw and a guy that could factor in to your 2023 plans given the injury to Javante Williams. But now even those plans have changed. I mean, he hasn't even been with the team for barely three weeks at this point. So I'm a big Mike Boone fan as well. I've just been skeptical of the kind of the Broncos putting their eggs in that basket Given what we saw last year, remember in the offseason, they kind of waited a long time to bring back Melvin Gordon. They didn't draft anybody. They kind of didn't even go after any priority guys in undrafted free agency. So that has led us to where we are today. And we talked about that leading up to the draft. And I, I was kind of saying I thought the Broncos should draft two running backs in this year's class. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I took a victory lap on the wide receiver in our Monday episode, Cody. I'm going to take a victory lap on this one as well. The, you just can't bank, like we said in the preseason. Remember last year, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon were mostly healthy the entire season. That has not been the case here in 2022, obviously. I've, well, Melvin's been healthy. Javante hasn't, but Melvin, his fumble issues persisted. Now, the Broncos are kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's evaluating guys like you mentioned, Latavius Murray, Mike Boone, guys that they may be in your 2023 plans, but are they going to be anything beyond that? That's a big question mark right now. It's also a big test for Tyrone Wheatley, Broncos' first year running back coach. Well, not like a first year coach in general, but just his first year with the team. Maybe he Denver. should suit back up, Cody. I mean, Denver, Tyrone I mean, Denver, yeah. Denver could use it at this point in time. We remember, <laughs> remember his play, man. I, I know Al Wilson stuck him on that fourth down play, but you know, hey, Tyrone Wheatley has had some really good plays in the National Football League, but. Unfortunately, this is the reality of the Broncos running back room as it currently stands right now. So how do the Broncos maneuver within this room going forward as it pertains to a struggling offense and how maybe they can utilize a multitude of backs? Are they going to go with a primary one-two punch? Or could we actually see them embrace a true by-committee approach going forward? You get that on today's episode, Locked On Broncos. But this episode of the show is brought to you by our good friends over there, LinkedIn. And these days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available and that's why you have to check out linkedin jobs linkedin jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free it's easy to create a job post in minutes then you add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your linkedin profile to spread word that you're hiring and then simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire it's why small businesses rate linkedin jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. Make sure you finish out the 2022 year on a strong note with a right team member today. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL. That's linkedin.com slash NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. How will the Broncos use the running back room that they have remaining after waving Melvin Gordon on Monday morning with the injury to Chase Edmonds, Mike Boone on injured reserve still? How does Denver proceed? Thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in and making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day, free and available everywhere you get your podcasts in audio format or whether you're watching on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Make sure you interact in the YouTube comment section down below so you can get involved in the conversation with us and with other members of Broncos country. Sarah, the offense is what it is. One of the bottom-ranked units in the National Football League, still 32nd in the NFL, to be exact. Not a really strong emphasis on being able to run the football, but now you wave Melvin Gordon, you have Latavius Murray, Chase Edmonds is injured, Mike Boone is still on injured reserve, and you have some other unknown guys behind Latavius Murray. I mean, it's safe to say at this point, I mean, Sarah, what do the Broncos do on the offensive side of the ball here? Is it time that they finally embrace a true committee approach, or do you feel like that will mesh with the offensive rhythm, which unfortunately hasn't had much rhythm this season? Right. It, there hasn't been much rhythm, and I think unfortunately for the Broncos, you have to continue doing what they've been doing, which is look for that hot hand at the position. And I mean, they kind of just admitted this last week when the coaches were getting interviewed 
they kind of just admitted like nobody's had a hot hand. So we can't really go with a hot hand. And that includes, I guess, Latavius Murray, who, yes, he's been effective for the team in short yardage situations, but he hasn't necessarily been a hot hand in terms of, hey, let's we got to feed this guy 20 to 25 carries a game. He's been more of that kind of secondary back that you turn to, you get inside the red zone, you get into the third and short situation, and he can rip off a three or four yard run if you need it. But that's pretty much been it. The Broncos haven't had any sort of hot hand. I think the 12 yard run by Latavius Murray against the Raiders kind of felt like I it felt like he ran for 75 yards on that play. You know, I mean, it was just like a it was a sight to see a sight for sore eyes to see a running back gain more than 10 yards on an individual carry. But to me, Cody, you got to go with the hot hand. You got to keep looking for it. You got to keep digging. You got to keep seeing if you can strike gold with somebody. And that means that you're going to have to start giving more and more carries to guys like Marlon Mack, maybe divine Ozigbo If you call him back up or, if you go and maybe your pro scouting department really likes somebody on another roster, I'll continue to bang the table for Tyler Goodson from the Green Bay Packers. I don't know his roster situation right now, but he played in the zone scheme at Iowa. I mean, he's he's been playing for the Packers this year, or at least practicing with them. I feel like the scheme translation could be there. He's got some speed. He can catch passes. I don't know. The pro scouting department is going to come into play here because you got to take a dart throw at some point and i think that that's what the broncos are going to have to do as they keep searching for that hot hand at running back somebody say he might be a good son potentially there we'll have to see that. <laughs> anyways i th- i mean i think all those things factor into consideration i i do part of me worries that denver will become too pass happy in these final seven games which look i understand you want to be able to see what you have with russell wilson Nothing that Russell Wilson is going to do at this point in time is going to change anything with the outcome of the season. Denver's going to have a losing season here once again for what feels like, was it the seventh or eighth total year in a row? I think it's seventh, seventh consecutive losing season. Not ideal from the optic standpoint, especially considering the expectations. But I also think that I, I would be very curious to see for Clint Kubiak, who is now the offensive play caller for this Broncos team and really is auditioning potentially for the job next year as the OC, whatever it may be. How can the commitment to the run game improve with the offensive flow under Clint Kubiak? To me, I think that's going to be a very, very important thing. I'm looking forward to seeing maybe how it all plays out for the remainder, the duration of this season. To me, I think that'll be a huge test here, right? Because he's coming from Minnesota where he had Kirk Cousins, he had Dalvin Cook, had Justin Jefferson. It's a different animal right now in Denver, and it's not the same because at least that Minnesota team right now, they're putting up points, and they are an offensive sight to see minus the game that they had against the Dallas Cowboys more recently but I digress yeah as we've seen in previous years with this zone running scheme Cody I think if you just stick to it you can have success with pretty much anybody out there that was kind of the mo in you know the previous years with Mike Shanahan and Gary Kubiak now we're kind of seeing that in the NFL these days with Kyle Shanahan. He's having success out there in San Francisco with a variety of different guys at late round draft picks. Christian McCaffrey, it doesn't really matter. You can bring guys into the fold. Clint Kubiak, we saw last year, Alexander Madison kind of had a really good year as Dalvin Cook struggled with injury. So you can bring guys into the scheme if you're willing to stick to it. I think that's one of the things this year that we haven't really seen. Remember, We were supposed to go back to that. Nathaniel Hackett talked about it, that wide zone type of offense where you're doing the play action boots and taking the shots downfield off play action. Like the Jake Plummer offense is the one that I think of that Gary Kubiak was really the the one that was calling the shots there alongside with Mike Shanahan. We just haven't seen a commitment to the zone. We've seen a lot more running out of shotgun. We've seen a lot more different. And when we did see the zone, I, I thought early on in that game against the Raiders when they were running the outside zone, it was a thing of beauty. I mean, that was one of Mel- the last plays of Melvin Gordon's time with the Denver Broncos that I'll remember fondly was the outside zone play to the left side of the line. It was really nice. It was a really well-executed running play. Stick to it. Let Clint Kubiak keep calling these plays. Keep that zone scheme going. Look for that hot hand at the running back position. And who knows? I mean, if you stick to it and you look for that hot hand, you might actually find a couple of guys here as the season goes along. Well, especially with the concerns about whether or not Juvante will be ready for next season, you also have to evaluate some of these guys because they might be carryovers. They might be guys that are starting the year for you on offense next season. So 
We'll see how it works out for this Broncos football team. But Broncos country, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Broncos on your favorite audio podcasting platform. And whether you're watching on YouTube, we appreciate you so much taking time out of your day to listen, to watch all things Denver Broncos content related here on the show. Despite how disappointing the season has been, we appreciate all of you who have stuck it out, who have been with us every step of the way. We have covered every single day all year long here. Lockdown Broncos. Make sure you enjoy tomorrow's episode. It's a crossover Thursday episode. Our man Sarah Bettinger sat down with Lockdown Panthers host Julian Council to preview Sunday's matchup on the road. I'll be there in Charlotte to cover the game as well. You get all that action here. Locked on Broncos.